Apple just unveiled the iPhone Air, claiming it's the biggest leap ever for their phones. Ultra thin, at 5.6mm, packing pro-level performance and weighing just 165 grams, it promises to wow users. But with compromises in camera and battery, the question is, who should buy it? Chapter 1. Apple's Bold Leap Think about a phone so thin it almost disappears in your hand, yet packs the same power as the biggest iPhone on the market. That's what Apple is claiming with the iPhone Air. Tim Cook called it the biggest leap ever for the iPhone, and while that might sound like marketing hype, there's more to it. This is the first real shakeup to the iPhone lineup since the iPhone X in 2017, a phone that redefined how we thought about full screen devices. But why does this matter now? The smartphone market is shifting fast. Samsung and Google are experimenting with foldables and AI enhanced features that are slowly chipping away at Apple's lead. US market share data shows iPhones still dominate, but Samsung is closing the gap. Air seems like Apple's answer, a device that doesn't just perform, it wows in design, keeping loyal users intrigued while showing competitors they're still pushing boundaries. Chapter 2. Design that turns heads. Let's talk about design, because this is where the iPhone Air really shines. At 5.6mm thick and weighing just 165 grams, it's the thinnest iPhone. Holding it, it feels almost futuristic, like something Apple has never built before. The frame is made from titanium, giving it a polished, mirrored finish that feels premium in a way even the iPhone 17 Pro doesn't. Apple also upgraded the durability, the front glass is ceramic sealed and up to three times more scratch resistant than before, while the back uses a new ceramic shield that's four times more crack resistant. Experts warn that while this design is impressive, extreme thinness always comes with risks, especially if you're dropping it frequently. Still, the takeaway is clear, Apple wants you to admire this phone for both its beauty and engineering, and in that, they've succeeded. Chapter 3. Performance Unleashed Under the hood, the iPhone Air houses the A19 Pro chip, the same processor as the iPhone 17 Pro. That means a 6-core CPU, a 5-core GPU, and a 16-core neural engine. What does that actually mean for you? Think of using advanced AI apps, multitasking, gaming and video editing, all without a hiccup. It's not just fast, it's future-proof, designed to handle what Apple calls next-generation Apple intelligence. Interestingly, the Air doesn't include the cooling system the Pro has, but early tests show it handles heat surprisingly well. Overheating tends to concentrate around the top near the camera, leaving the rest of the phone cool. While this is Apple's thinnest iPhone, performance is not being sacrificed. For creators or AI enthusiasts, this chip means the Air can do more than just look pretty. It can power demanding workflows seamlessly. Chapter 4. Battery and Thinness Trade-Offs now, there's a trade-off with this ultra-thin design, battery life. Apple advertises 27 hours of video playback for Air, which is slightly lower than the standard iPhone 17's 30 hours. That's not bad, but it's not outstanding either. If you're a heavy user, this is something to consider. Apple tried to solve this with the Maxafi battery pack, which attaches to the back and increases video playback to 40 hours. What's clever is its smart charging, which optimizes thermal performance to prevent overheating. Experts note that while this isn't revolutionary, it's a thoughtful solution for those who need extra juice on long days or trips. So yes, you might need the pack if you're a power user, but for average users, the Air still holds up surprisingly well. Chapter 5. The Gains and Limitations The iPhone Air has only one rear camera lens, a notable reduction from the triple lens setup on the iPhone 17 Pro. But it's not just any lens. With a 48 megapixel main sensor, Apple claims it captures true-to-life colors, excellent contrast, and sharper skin tones. You can also switch between optical zoom ranges and record up to 4K at 60 frames per second. Here's the catch. You lose the ultra-wide and advanced telephoto capabilities. That means fewer creative options for vlogging, landscapes or zoomed shots. If you're someone who rarely uses ultra-wide or telephoto, it won't matter much. But if you're a content creator or photography enthusiast, this limitation is significant. Still, Apple made sure the camera is versatile enough for everyday use, keeping AI features like action mode and auto-rotation for selfies. It's a mix of premium performance and practical compromises. Chapter 6. Apple Intelligence and AI Features Apple Intelligence is quietly shaping the iPhone Air ecosystem. The AirPods Pro 3, for example, 
now offers live translation using Apple's AI, turning real-time conversations into your preferred language almost instantly. Meanwhile, the Apple Watch Series 11 includes AI-powered workout guidance and sleep tracking with sleep scores, helping users make smarter health decisions. Compared to Google's Pixel AI features, Apple's approach is less ambitious but more integrated. It doesn't allow on-the-fly camera-based Q and A, but it ensures reliability and seamless device integration. For most users, Apple intelligence enhances everyday life without the steep learning curve of more experimental AI features. Experts caution that slower AI development may allow competitors to catch up, but for now, Apple is betting on stability over headline-grabbing gimmicks. Chapter 7. Market Competition So, how does the iPhone Air fit into the bigger smartphone picture? Samsung's foldables, like the Galaxy Z Flip 7 and Fold 7, are gaining traction with bolder AI features and flexible screens. Apple's approach is different. Instead of chasing folds, it's betting on ultra-thin, elegant design combined with solid performance. This could be risky if foldables become mainstream quickly, but Apple seems confident. Their research shows that design still matters to many users more than gimmicks. Early reactions from users at the launch event indicate that the Air's sleek form factor is a major draw even for people who could afford the Pro or foldable devices. Apple is clearly staking its claim on elegance and reliability over experimental tech for now. Chapter 8. Who should buy the iPhone Air? Finally, let's answer the big question. Who is this phone actually for? The iPhone Air is ideal for design lovers who want something beautiful, light and futuristic in their pocket. It's also great for moderate camera users who don't need ultra-wide lenses or extreme zoom, and for those curious about AI-powered features across Apple devices. It's not the best choice for heavy photographers, vloggers needing multiple lenses, or anyone who relies on extended battery life without accessories. But for the majority of users, it strikes a balance between performance, elegance, and usability. Think of it as Apple's statement that innovation doesn't always have to be about adding more lenses or folding screens. Sometimes it's about refining what already works. What do you think? Are you ready to go thin and powerful with the iPhone Air, or do you prefer the full Pro experience? Comment below. Don't forget to like, subscribe, and hit the bell so you never miss the latest tech insights. Thanks for watching.